Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. Today's video I'm going to introduce you to one part of chess that is a little bit hidden. It's not tactics, it's not openings, it's something else. And I would like to introduce it to you because we're, it's pretty fun and it's one of my favorite things about chess. What I'm talking about is called chess composition. David, what is composition? What is this? Well, everyone likes tactics, right? Everyone likes the fact that there's, there's this very narrow path towards success and white has to find it or black has to find it and everyone likes that they usually usually come from real games but chess composition is is artificial you know, so you create players like tactics so they go they sit in, in in their table in front of their board and create a puzzle so they compose it that's why it's called chess composition so I'm going to show you this first I'm going to show you five of my favorite one the last two are truly special you will see why but I'm going to show you this first one, which is the one I usually use to introduce people to chess composition. So it's white to play, and there's only one way to win in two moves. So my instruction to you is pause your video and find the only way for white to win in two moves. Well, hope you pause your video. The only way to win as white in this position and I'm going to, once again, I like introducing you to the world of chess composition with this puzzle in, in particular, or with this chess composition, I should say, is Rook A6. Zugzvan. Zugzvan is when all, all your opponent's moves are, are, are bad. So in this case, what can black play? Well, can black move this pawn? No. Oh, sorry. He cannot move it forward, so he has to capture the rook, which is the main line. We will see it in a second. Can black move this pawn? Not in front, so he could capture, maybe? No, that would be illegal, because the rook would give, give a check to the king, so that would be illegal. And if you move the bishop anywhere, it could be literally anywhere. Uh, bishop c7, bishop d6, bishop e5, it doesn't matter. Let's say bishop d6, you checkmate like this. So, once again, we go to the main line, b takes a6. And now, you probably saw it, white plays b7. This is checkmate, it's beautiful, I know. White, is, white, white has only a pawn, and wins with a pawn. It's amazing. And this is chess composition for you. It just shows you this ridiculous position where you would dream of having this position in a tournament because everyone would clap and would say, wow, why just won with a pawn? So that's why I like chess composition. Let's go to the next one. This is chess composition number two. You have to find the only way for white to checkmate in four moves. David, I'm winning. I have an extra rook. I, I can win in other ways. Yeah, but that's the point of chess composition. You have to find the only way to win in four moves, which is the shortest amount of moves you can finish the game in. So pause your video. Okay. If you pause your video, hopefully, um, you would have found or probably would have struggled a little bit because what happens is that black is a little bit stuck here, right? And black's only moves are b5 and c5. That being said, you may be going to come up with a move, which is brilliant and it looks ridiculous. And once again, this is why I like chess compositions. Rook c1. David, this rook is just... Well, what is that rook doing in the c file? It's not open. You want your rooks in open files. Well, you're right. But this is anticipating to what black is going to play. If black plays, the main line goes b5. And this is where you see this rook doing a lot. But if white goes c5, this is a mistake. Because now rook d1, their only move is b5. Right? Black doesn't have anything else to do. Rook d5... And if you take or play before, it both it loses for the same reason, because you play rook takes e5. And this is checkmate. So, let's go back to this position. After rook c1, the test, the way black thinks, well, what are you doing white with that rook on c1 is b5. But here, you get to see why. You play c5 as white. What is, what is black suddenly move? b4. And now you're going to probably say, ah. Uh, you take... King b5, checkmate in one move, on to c4. Question, would that be checkmate if the rook was on f1 or e1? No. That's why you wanted your rook on c1. I know, it's amazing. And that's why I like chess composition. I'm going to say that over and over. Hope you can tolerate that. Chess composition number three. Now we have white pieces. David, white is absolutely winning. White has three pieces and black only has a bishop and a pawn. Yes, but once again, the instruction of this chess composition or this composition i'm going to start saying is white to play and find the only way to checkmate in three moves there's only one way you should find it so pause your video 
Okay. Um, in this position, you have to somehow force checkmate. For instance, the way I think about this is, if this knight didn't exist, let's say if this knight, or if it was away from the h file, like let's say far away, then you would play rook h1, bishop e1, and rook takes e1. So that would be checkmate. That's why the first move is to move the knight. So you move the knight to f5. That's very important where you move the knight, by the way. David, you just sacrifice the rook. Yeah. Now this is a little bit of a puzzle itself. Because now you think, well, this, this pawn cannot move. This king cannot move. This bishop can't, can move. But how can it make it so it can't move? And then you come up with knight g7. David, uh, black's only move is taking the, the knight. Yeah, and then you take the bishop, and this is checkmate. And if you if you counter the moves, it was one, two, three moves. That's the only way to win. You can try. You can test me. You can write it in your comments if you think, David, I think you can do it in, in a quicker way. I'm very happy. But I think uh, you're going to have a hard time trying to find it. At the beginning of the video, I told you that the last two were special. And the reason why they're special is that I think this is what the first, I don't remember correctly, but this is the first one that I ever solved in my life. Um, or this is where at least I realized that I liked chess composition. So it's white to play, and clearly white is losing in material because white only has uh, these amounts of pieces and black has more pieces. But the point is that the king on e5, although it looks active, it's actually a weakness. So... Pause your video, find the only way for white to win. So in this case, it's just to win. Um, because in some lines, you just win material. So pause your video and trying to figure out what's the only way to win in, as white. Okay. The only way to win up as white is to push the pawn to f4. This is check, so the king has to move. Now, if the king goes to f5, you just give a check, king g4, and then you win the game. Yeah? So white should win the game easily now that white is up a rook. So black is going to play king d5. This is the big test. What do you do now? Well, you're going to play f5 for king, the rook, and the bishop. If the rook moves, you take the bishop. If the bishop moves, you take the rook. So bishop takes f5 is forced. Everything so far has been forced. And now you're going to play knight f4. Check. Can the king go to c6, c5, or c4? No, because the rook is here. So king e5 is forced. And now you're not going to take the rook. Because then after bishop takes, you, you could argue that, well, you you just won material, right? But then you after a while and you realize d5, d4 is coming, this is actually a draw. In fact, white is actually struggling a little bit. So this wouldn't be winning for white. What is winning for white is rook d1. The silent move. This is not a capture and this is not a check. But it's the most forcing move in the position. David, how can it be? Well, it's threatening checkmate. That's why it's so forcing. And in fact, there's only one way to stop that with c6. And this is the whole point. This is the, the brilliant part of the puzzle. This is what made, made me fall in love with chess composition. Rook d5. Well, black has to take, right? Forcing moves once again. Knight d3 check. The, can the king avoid anywhere? No. In fact, this is you're already getting this. The king is kind of in a jail. The only move is e takes d3. But now, the final move, f4, winning with a pawn checkmate. Looks ridiculous. Black has a thousand pieces, white only has one. Yet, white checkmates black, because black is just in a little cage. The last composition we're going to look at today is just an atrocity. It's just a, it's just a work of art or, or some sort of diabolic... It's... it's it's you're gonna see so the reason why i'm showing this is that because this is probably the most famous out of all and second of all it's extremely complicated and i still can't believe it every time i come up with this i just think is it really winning for white but okay pause your video and try to win the game for white so white is down a lot of material so white has a bishop and a knight two pawns but black has a knight bishop another knight and more pawns so it's 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 white has to do something quickly which is the motto or the, the 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 only way to to solve this composition so pause your video try to figure it out don't worry if you don't this is extremely uh, complicated and yeah so if you pause your video well done the only way to win as white is knight f6 so you can't promote to a queen yet because knight f7 is check and you're gonna you're gonna lose your queen 
Um, and there's no no way you can force checkmate or anything. At least you would like to force checkmate. So the first move is knight f6. Now this is a little trap. If black goes somewhere uh, a little bit silly like king h8, then you're gonna promote to a queen. So king g7 is kind of forced, if not uh, sorry forced. And then you play knight h5 check. The point is that if king h7 happens, you play bishop c2, and you force the king to go to the eighth rank where you're gonna queen with check. That's gonna be checkmate. So king g6 is forced. Once again, if you queen now, you're gonna get forked like this. So you have to play bishop c2 check, king takes h5, and here I'm gonna blow your mind. In this position, the best move and the only move that wins the game is d8 queen. David, you just said that this loses to knight f7, which is what happens in the game, or what happens in the in the chess composition, the, the best way to play is black. But now, there's a very good reason why you allow that. You play king e6, you lose the queen, and you play king f5. David, what is going on? Well, I can just bring my knight, right? Well, if you just bring your knight, the point is that this, this, this king, all of a sudden, it's in a mating net. So it's very close to getting checkmated. So you're going to play bishop d1. The only move is e2, bishop takes e2, and that's checkmate. The bishop is giving a check, you cannot avoid anywhere, and this pawn is doing a very good job at avoiding this. So, all of a sudden, the king is in danger. So, what, what black has to play is e2, now bishop d1 is of course not possible, and you play bishop e4, insisting. The best move for black is to promote to a knight, so if you promote to a queen, this is checkmate, you have to promote to a knight, and then white plays bishop d5. Threatening nothing. Okay, it is threatening something. But it's not threatening checkmate this way, nor this way. So you would think black has enough time to, to do something, right? But the reality is that, I mean, let's say black plays c2, which is the best way and then the best test for white, let's say. You just play bishop c4. So the, the point of bishop d5 is that it prepares bishop c4, and it prepares bishop c4 is preparing bishop e2. Very slow, but it's still winning, and black can't do anything. This bishop is not doing anything. These knights are kind of far away. You can't move this one, because if you move it, you, this is checkmate. And if you move this one, bishop c4 is coming anyway. So you can't give a check with this knight. You would like to check the king, but the, both of them, all of them are horribly coordinated. So, c2 happens. You play bishop c4. Once again, if you queen, if you promote to a queen, you get bishop e2 checkmated. And the king is just miraculously placed on f5. There's no piece that can give a check. So... Black once again has to promote to another knight. So now black has four knights. Not to be confused with four knights. Bishop b5. Bishop e8 is now a very, very big threat. So black has to stop it. Knight c7. If you play bishop e8, now you just blunder everything and you lose. So you have to play bishop a4. And now bishop d1 is coming. Question. David, can't, you have so many knights. As black, you have so many knights. Can't you give a check? No, you can't. It's amazing. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. I wish this had happened to my in my game. I would retire from chess if this was if this was a tournament game and it was the last round and I need to win to to win a thousand pounds. I wish this was it's my dream. I would retire. I would probably start playing checkers or something like that. But it, it's a it's just, it's a composition and that's why I like chess compositions because they're just they're dreams. They're ridiculous. Knight of three, bishop takes e two, and there there's nothing you can do. You just play c four. Or, or whatever, 96, trying to give a check here, but it's too late because you play bishop takes f3. And that's checkmate. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you managed to understand my passion for chess compositions. And I hope I managed to share that passion a little bit to you. Go out there, try to solve some chess compositions. They're amazing, they're absurd, they're ridiculous, but they're incredible. As always, have a nice day, and I will see you soon.